A Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. It has been some time, I guess, uh, I guess a day or so since I've conducted another broadcast here on the Blog Talk Radio Network, and this is number 155 for all the folks out there keeping up to date with the True Conservative Radio program, uh, we have a variety of different subject matters to talk about this evening. Now, I don't even know where to start, but uh, I seem that out of my own personal passions for a particular subject matter that we're going to talk about this evening, I'm going to go ahead and talk about something else. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the comments made by... Uh, conservative commentators, uh, Rush Limbaugh and Christian conservative uh, Pat Robertson, about the earthquake situation in Haiti. And uh, the reason we're going to talk about it, folks, is because uh, this is a very complicated emotional web of, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it, but uh, political correctness you know, I guess that's what I should say. It's a, it's a, an emotional web of political correctness 
gone completely haywire. And what's really unfortunate is that you've got every liberal media outlet jumping on the bandwagon when it comes to this malarkey here. I mean, I don't know if you've been reading the news wires or the liberal news wires. These damn liberals are pouncing all over Pat Robertson and Rush Limbaugh. Now, I am in no way trying to justify Pat Robertson's remarks that uh, Haiti somehow willed itself that horrific earthquake uh, by making a pact with the devil when it tried to, you know, set itself independent from the French a long time ago. I, I am in no way justifying that ridiculous malarkey. I think maybe Pat Robertson uh, maybe needs to see his neurologist. Uh, this is a man who's obviously a little long in the tooth. He probably had good intentions when he first came into uh, being a televangelist or whatever the hell he is. Uh, now he's gone completely haywire. Uh, you know, this comment was just way off base, and it makes those that uh, label themselves conservatives, those that are fighting for the true conservative movement, comments like that make us look like whack jobs out here. Now, I don't want to get too into what Pat Robertson said because I disagree with it. I think that, uh, you know, God did not uh, call upon this earthquake upon the people of Haiti because, you know, they – uh, practice voodoo or, you know, uh, uh, sell voodoo dolls or whatever the crap is, whatever whatever crack pipe idea Pat Robertson is attempting to facilitate here, it's absolutely wrong. So I want to start off, first and foremost, before we get into this discourse about uh, this situation about Haiti, I want to get that right out of the way real clear. Pat Robertson, uh, you know, why don't you, I mean, don't you own diamond mines and all kinds of uh, you know, personal, private resources. Why don't you go somewhere and go hang out in an island, all right? You've made enough money selling your malarkey. Go out there and sip on some lattes. Uh, you know, do whatever it is. You know, have an Eskimo pie. Just get the hell out of here already. You're, you're pissing everybody off, all right? This is no time. This isn't like the old days where we were living in civilized America and everybody was you know, happy-go-lucky because we were the dominant economic force in the world. It's no longer that way, Robertson, okay? We don't need your malarkey, all right? I mean, I'm sure anybody with any kind of rational sense understands what you're trying to do, all right? You're obviously no different than the Ayatollah in Iran, utilizing the, uh, uh, you know, theocratic ideas uh, to implement your own personal beliefs. And it's ridiculous. And if you want to be somebody who implements beliefs, if you're you, if you're the person that wants to spawn ideas, uh, you know, stop pussyfooting around, hiding behind the spiritual uh, the, the spiritual force field. And why don't you come into the political realm where ideas are not only gathered around and deciphered from and interpreted, uh, but they're also believed in. And as you can see from the test of history, from, from the, the variety of different tests of history, that ideas change the world, true ideas, not little fictitious little taglines like, yes, we can, and, you know, all, all that garbage. We need true idealism. Now, am I saying Rush Limbaugh is that uh, idealism? Well, I'm not necessarily saying that. But what I do agree with with Rush Limbaugh is that uh, he says what's on his mind and conveys certain ideas on his political radio show, and those that are listening in can interpret that. And unfortunately, I would not think that you were dumb enough to, you know, anything you heard, you would just accept it verbatim. Uh, I would hope that you're an independent American thinker and you would uh, take what Rush is saying, maybe take what I'm saying, take what whatever commentator that you appreciate, take what they're saying, and conclude your own assumptions, all right? Conclude your own beliefs and understand the foundations of those beliefs. But you see, right now in America, this liberal regime that's in power today came to power through the extortion of emotionalism. That's right. The extortion of emotionalism. They came out and, you know, said all this nonsense about the poor in America, and they took advantage of an economic crisis, and 
you know, yes, we can, and you know, they they had a uh, orator in uh, President Barack Obama to relay teleprompted speeches that would get people feeling funny in the pants. You had these super bureaucrats out here that just uh, literally crawled over bodies to attain uh, their level of congressional power today. It's just it's just completely disgusting. And now that these people are in power, what are these bureaucrats doing? Because they're not doing anything. They're just sitting around playing with pecker shafts and allowing their cronies to raid the American taxpaying system. What's their excuse for the lack of progress and the lack of change? Well, their excuse is, um, George W. Bush, uh, George W. Bush, uh, George W. Bush, meh, 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 George W. Bush. That's their excuse, folks. Why don't you watch the liberal media? Watch anybody who's supposed to be a mouthpiece for this administration and this liberal regime. The first thing that comes out of their mouth is, um, George W. Bush, George W. Bush, George W. Bush. That's the first thing that comes out of their suck hole. And why are you crying about George W. Bush at this point in time? All right? Don't believe the hype, folks. Just because they're putting forth George W. Bush, they're trying to recant something that they can't put forth in today's context. Because they are in charge. Don't you understand that? The liberals are in full, entire control of our government. They control the House of Representatives. They control the Senate. They control the White House, the executive branch. They're now trying to overtake the judicial branch by you know, putting forth these whacked-out liberal-thinking nut jobs for lifetime appointment ships on the Supreme Court. I mean, do you understand that these people are in complete and total power? This liberal ideology is in complete and total control of this bureaucratic system of government? That's what I've been trying to put through your thick, numb skulls out there. They're in control. So whatever change it is that they were supposed to implement, that we're supposed to put a Cadillac in every driveway and a pepperoni pizza on everybody's doorstep at 8 p.m., courtesy of the United States government, I mean, where that went, uh, people are still trying to figure that out. And a lot of people are starting to get a little upset that, why well, Barack Obama ain't hooking me up, baby. He ain't hooking me up enough, baby. So not to, get, not to get off on a rant, I know I'm going off on the deep end. We're supposed to be talking about Rush Limbaugh here, all right? The reason I'm, I'm going to talk about Rush Limbaugh, because I don't think what he said, there, there was anything wrong with what he said. I thought they were valid points that he brought up, that this Haiti situation, this unfortunate incident, him, his liberal regime, and the liberal and feminist media are all conspiring against each other to focus the human American conscience on this devastation in Haiti. I mean, have you flipped on the boob tube on any of these supposed mainstream media outlets? I mean, they're showing you devastation. They're showing you just horrific, you know, just disturbing images. Why? Why are they showing you this, folks? Because they're trying to divert your attention on the real subject matters at hand here in America. Uh, you know, through this uh, crotch bomber, this ball bomber uh, that tried to come into the country uh, this past Christmas, we're in two wars. Our national security obviously is constantly being jeopardized. We're in two different wars. Uh, the economic situation is completely depleting. The stimulus package, too, was a complete joke and a complete raid on the American taxpayer, and now they have uh, Haiti, you know, this unfortunate situation that happened in Haiti, you know, and now what, we're supposed to just drop everything? We're supposed to divert resources uh, out of our pocket to go help the people of Haiti? Look, I feel sorry for the people of Haiti, all right? It's sad. I think we need to give them medical supplies. I think we need to do whatever we can, but as far as the government doing anything, I think the government needs to just, you know, uh, keep themselves, uh, keep their hands to themselves and start worrying about what's going on here in America. Start worrying about our men and women that are out there dying for our country out there in the theaters of combat in the international community. That's what I think that we need to start worrying about. All right, let the private sector go in and help these people. Let the Red Cross and all these nonprofits that get these billions upon billions Every single year, and every time there's a tragedy, haven't you noticed this, folks? Every time there's a tragedy, all of a sudden Bill Clinton's face 
comes into the picture somewhere. I mean, haven't you noticed this now? I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to say nothing. I just don't particularly like this trend that I'm seeing. You know, during the tsunami, uh, wasn't it him and the old man Bush coming together and raising all kinds of money? <clears throat> I mean, I thought they raised like two billion dollars or something. What, what happened to that money? I don't know. I'm just I'm just asking questions. All right. And now you've got Bill Clinton up here, uh, basically getting on television sets and saying. We need you to send money. Oh, no, no, that's not how he's saying it. Excuse me. He's saying it like this. Yeah, baby. We need you to just send money. No, don't send any food. Don't send any canned food. Nothing like that. No, we need you to send money. We need you to send cash money, baby. Uh, are you kidding me? I mean, this is a disgrace, all right? This is an utter disgrace. So what I'm saying to you is uh, the American people. This is what I'm saying to you. We need to take care of ourselves. It's about time that we start realizing that we've been the world police of third world nations, of people who hate us. I mean, don't you understand that uh, when Rush Limbaugh said that we've been taking care of Haiti and it's called the American tax system, don't you understand that our taxpaying dollars went to Haiti? Yeah, we're giving aid to every third world nation. We're giving aid to non-third world nations. We're giving aid and money to countries just so that they don't invade other countries. Do you understand where our taxpaying dollars are going? We're paying the world off out here just so that they, they won't get into a fight with each other, for heaven's sake. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to humanity what's happening to this, to this country. So what I'm saying is, all right, it's an unfortunate situation to the people that happened. Well, whatever happened to Haiti, I'm sorry, you know. I mean, I don't wish that on anybody. But we've been giving foreign aid. We've been getting lots of money to Haiti for I don't even know how long. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that they should have had some sort of earthquake fund or some sort of I, – I, I mean, who the hell would have thought that the, an earthquake would have uh, – uh, would have raveled uh, the land out there. But what I'm saying is is that uh, Haiti should have had at least some sort of central nucleus of government, uh, a private sector of something. They should have had allocated and properly allocated natural resources so that if they had a tremendous devastation, that they would be able to maybe not necessarily sustain itself. But to be able to, you know, at least help themselves and help those people out there that were dying just, you know, sitting there in rubble. I, I hate to be putting Cuba on any kind of a pedestal because, you know, that damn Fidel Castro, I hope, you know, you know, God, if you're listening, please give that stupid idiot a heart attack already. But Cuba, for heaven's sake, being the collective communist crap that it is. It's prepared for any natural disasters because it understands, that country understands its uh, geopolitical position in the globe, on the globe. They understand that they can be hit up with hurricanes. They can be hit up with all kinds of natural disasters, tsunamis, that sort of thing. So even communists ask Cuba, what, what, they're still riding around in 1954, you know, Ford, you know, all kinds of cars that were made in America back then. I mean, these people are barely, you know, get going into bread lines so that they can get, you know, a fish head or something so they can cook for their family. But the the government, at least, you know, Fidel Castro has enough sense to realize that if the damn country went to piss and crap, that he has the resources allocated so that he his in you know little bureaucratic communist government can sustain itself while providing legitimate integrity to the people. And I'm not trying I am not trying to put communist ass Cuba on any kind of pedestal, believe me. But I'm being a realist, folks, that each country that governs its people has to be responsible for its people. And if they're not going to be responsible for its people, then it's the people's responsibility to rise up and eliminate that government. All right? And I'm not talking because of any petty garbage. All right? I mean, because there's some people, I and mean, this is what's happened in African countries for a long period of time. This is what's happened in South American countries for a long period of time. Uh, they have perfect systems that could be budding 
uh, capitalist uh, economies, uh, you know, budding, flourishing economies. Uh, but because all these morons within uh, these countries are uneducated, they're susceptible to political romance or uh, 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 philosophical or religious theocracy, and they get enthralled with these ideas and they want to go and, you know, join a damn guerrilla uh, force out there in the jungle somewhere to overthrow the flourished capitalist system that's being built in their in their country. They don't want to have nothing to do with it. And then when they overthrow the capitalist system in their country, what do they put forth? They put some, they put they either put forth some makeshift communist garbage, which ends up being overthrown by another version of that communist garbage, or they put in some military junta. It's disgrace, folks. It's just an absolute disgrace. So that's why I'm saying, look, I'm sorry for the people in Haiti. But Rush Limbaugh has a legitimate point. And what did he, exactly did he say? I'll tell you what he said. He said that uh, Obama, Rush Limbaugh said this. I'm paraphrasing him. He said that Obama is utilizing this Haiti earthquake situation to show that he's such a humanitarian. Yeah, that he's such a humanitarian and that, uh, you know, he's going out there and trying to, uh, well, I mean, this is another part of the, the phrase that he said that he said that he and this is Rush Limbaugh's quotes, all right, paraphrasing. He said that Barack Obama was trying to impress both dark skin and light skin blacks by facilitating this dramatic humanitarian aid to to Haiti. Now, I don't know if that was Obama's true motivation. Okay, I'm not I'm not going to get racial about it, but I do agree with the fact that Rush or excuse me, uh, Obama is attempting to facilitate a humanitarian uh, blanket uh, around the mishappenings and the misdoings of his administration by exploiting this uh, this ridiculous uh, Haiti situation. I mean, when I say it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous because. I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, I mean, we're sitting here uh, being exploited of our emotion by this liberal media saying that, oh, we need your money, we need your – I mean, they're trying to tell us to send money. Look, we can send them food. We have supplies. I'm sure there's a lot of people that, that can send them bottled water. But, uh, I mean, don't you find it funny that these people are wanting your cash? They want your capital and not supplies and manpower or anything of that nature. Haven't you noticed that? Uh, anyway, uh, for you folks out there uh, in the chat room, uh, of course, we've got stupid-ass hackers once again that are hacking the chat room. Uh, so if you see me, uh, you, know, ch ch you know, typing anything weird or uh, saying anything ridiculous, it's these, uh, you know, little 15-year-old peach fuzz on the balls having fruit bowls that are out here trying to impress their, uh, you know, trying to impress their girlfriends or butt boys or, or whatever they're trying to impress on the Internet. Uh, you know, let them keep doing it. Keep listening to the True Conservative Radio Show. And by the way, folks, please go out there and tweet the show. At, you know, put it on your Facebooks, put it on your MySpaces. Let everybody know about the True Conservative Radio program, because uh, these issues that I'm discussing on this program need to be said. And just because these little hackers here are trying to, uh, you know, halter my show by hacking my chat room and trying to say ridiculous nonsense in my name it's just it's just sad it's just a disgust it's disgusting all right it is really disgusting but this is what our american youth is because i guarantee you that this person that downloaded this little script to you know hack a flash chat because believe me these idiots aren't doing it on their own all right they, these idiots aren't doing it on their own you know they, they're downloading some little flash chat hacker that they got off a of Google search, not knowing that it's ridden with, you know, viruses and Trojan horses and all this other nonsense, and they actually think that there's some kind of a, a too cool hack sore by implementing the program on this flash chat and saying, hey, look at me, I'm going to act like ghosts in the chat room. That's really going to make me look like, got a, like I've got a 15 and a half inch John Holmes sausage. All right, give me a break. Anyway, I, I want to get back to what uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh was saying. Then we're going to move on here to another subject matter. But uh, 
I just want to say that uh, the liberals are trying to, you know, demonize Rush Limbaugh for saying and, and actually practicing his First Amendment constitutionally protected right. And I think that everybody who's demonizing Rush Limbaugh, just turn off the channel, you ass clowns. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. All right? I mean, I've got MSNBC on my uh, TV here, but I don't want to listen to it. I don't want to see that fat-headed, four-eyed, what's that idiot, that stupid, fat-headed Oberman. That's a stupid name. That lispy, uh, you know, slobbering over his mouth Matthews, or that dumbass, dikey, muff-diving, fruity-ass Matt Owl. I don't want to see any of them people. All right, and I'm, I'm disappointed with Fox News, too, with all due respect to Fox News. You know, I used to go out there and listen to them, but until they hired Sarah Palin as a legitimate political commentator to the program, I thought it was a disgrace. And the reason I'm saying that, folks, is I know there's a lot of conservatives out there that frown on the fact that I just don't particularly care for Sarah Palin. And it's because of what she did to the Republicans. It's because what she did to the true conservative movement, folks. And I'm just going to get off on this little rant here because people keep emailing me saying that I need to support this Eskimo dunce. And I'm not going to do it, folks. I'm sorry. And I guarantee you, I'm not trying to be a defeatist here, but if Sarah Palin runs for president under the Republican ticket in 2012, you might as well go ahead and, you know, just give Obama the second term to the White House. All right? You might as well go ahead and give Obama the second term into the White House. It's a, it's a disgrace. It's disgusting. And look at this. I've got people in the chat room saying, uh, saying Sarah Palin 2012 here. All right? Sarah Palin 2012. I mean, is it just me, or does anyone else not recognize that this woman is a dummy? She's an absolute dummy. And on top of which, she broke up the true conservative movement because of her little daughter going out, hopping around on something that looks good in a, in a hockey jersey and knows how to slap a hockey stick, ends up getting pregnant, and everyone has to justify Palin's daughter getting pregnant? I mean, I thought that was a disgrace what happened in, in the Republican convention uh, during the McCain-Palin ticket. I thought it was a disgrace that you had Republicans five years ago, five years ago they would have denounced anyone who had a teenage daughter who had a child out of wedlock for heaven's sake. They would have done, they would have shunned it. They, 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 they would have uh, thumbed their noses at it for heaven's sake. But then you had the Republicans trying to justify it for heaven's sake. Then you have these idiot so-called conservatives attempting to facilitate some sort of a spin on the idea that you know, this broad, this dumbass broad here is attempting to, to, to facilitate on the conservative movement that we need to accept teenage bimbos in our family? I mean, do you, don't you idiots understand that uh, Sarah Palin has done that to the human conscience in America? She's made you accept pre-teenage sexual relations! She's made you accept pre-teenage pregnancy, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. She's made you accept that. And let me tell you something, folks. I'm dead serious, and I've said it before, and I will say it again. If my daughter, let me tell you, my daughters are all grown up. All my children are all grown up. So thank God I don't have to deal with this malarkey and this screwed-up reality that we live in today. But let me tell you something, folks. I instilled the conservative values and the conservative principles in my children, and they in turn are going to pass it down to their children. But by God, if my daughter ever came to me as a teenage girl and said she was pregnant, I mean, by God, if this daughter or niece or whoever, whoever, they came to me and said, I'm pregnant. I would kick them out of my house. Do you understand that? I would throw my daughter out on the street. I'd throw her out on the street. Because let me tell you something, folks. It wasn't my fault 
that my daughter decided to fall hook, line, and sinker with watching MTV and watching all these ridiculous entertainment stars that are suggesting to them that they need to be philanderous whorebags. So for Sarah Palin to sit here and actually have the conservative movement back this teenage pregnancy crap up, it makes me sick! God damn it! It makes me sick! I mean, are you a real conservative if you're justifying teen pregnancy? Are you a real conservative if you're justifying teenage sexual activity? No, you are not! No, you are not! You are robbing these teenagers of their innocence and their ability to develop their own sexual identity, and you are suggesting to them to be sexual deviants, and it makes me sick! It makes me sick to my stomach! I, I tell you this, I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. The Republican Party and the conservative movement will rue the day. Let me repeat that again. The Republican Party and the conservative movement will rue the day if they nominate Sarah Palin to run for president in 2012. It's not going to happen. You're going to allow these liberals to take power again because of your own stupidity. This woman has no ideas. She's a dummy. She's a beauty queen bimbo. Don't you understand that? I better calm down, folks. Oh. My chest is hurting here. I didn't mean to get so riled up about Sarah Palin. This show is not about Sarah damn Palin. It's not about Sarah Palin. So I'm going to go ahead and move on, folks. I'm going to go ahead and move on. I'd like for you to give me a call. If you want to chime in on any of the commentary that's being conducted here on the True Conservative Radio Program, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Whew, let me calm down, folks. Anyway, I want to go ahead, and I want to go ahead and uh, just segue from Rush Limbaugh talking about the Haiti situation, and I want to talk about Google banning the true conservative blog from advertising the little AdSense program. Now, let's talk about that for a second, all right? Now, let me explain to you what exactly happened to yours truly, thanks to dumbass leftist Google. Now, if you were listening to the previous program in episode number 154, I alluded to the fact that Google was a leftist company. And the reason I made that assumption is because of their political contributions to the liberal regime that's that's currently in power today. I mean, they were a major contributor. And right after I said that, all of a sudden, the Google AdSense little overlords over here decided, "Um, we're going to go ahead and disable your little account. Yeah. Uh, uh, Well, you know, you're trying to manipulate the numbers. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to manipulate the numbers, and, um, well, we don't like it, so we're going to disable you. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, they made it seem like I was trying to embezzle thousands of dollars from these idiots when all I was trying to do was send them advertisement. I was trying to send them traffic, and these assholes at Google decided to take it upon themselves. You know, let me, let me explain to you. I've been with this Google AdSense crap ever since I began the True Conservative Radio Program. And I started the True Conservative Radio Program three years ago. And when I started it, I decided to go along with this stupid little Google AdSense program because they claim, oh, I made $10,000 a month 
uh, using Google AdSense uh, because I, I, I'm ready to shut your mouth. And let me explain. I, I've never collected a check from Google AdSense, all right? I'm not even really doing this for the money, to be honest with you, because if it was for the money, I've collected a whopping $20. Let me explain that again. I have collected a whopping $20 from the Blog Talk Radio Network. That's it, all right? All right, that's an absolute fact. So I figured, well, let's go ahead and send some traffic to these ass clowns over there at Google, all right? Now, I was not saying to anybody that if they click these links that I will give them a percentage of my income. Never did I say that, nor did I say for people to just sit on their fat asses and continue to click links all day. I didn't say that either, okay? And let me explain something else. I have been, you know, waiting for a check because they don't mail you a check until you accumulate $100 and little stupid clicks. Okay, so let me tell you, this month I just went over that $100 mark after three years, three years of doing this broadcast and providing commentary at the True Conservative blog. Three years. And because, I don't know, I decided to basically call out Google for the leftists that they are, they decided to take it upon themselves and utilize word trickery within the terms of services, within their little pissing ground AdSense program, to say that I violated the terms of service. Well, you know what? I don't really give a damn, really. I really don't care. It was 140 bucks, all right? 140 bucks. And you see, what's really unfortunate is that's the whole purpose of advertising, Google, you leftist ass clowns, all right? The whole purpose of advertising is so that you can send other people traffic in hopes of having them purchase the product that you sent them to. That's the whole purpose of advertising, you assholes. And that's what I was doing. That's what I was doing for you stupid, dumb leftist assholes at Google. But you know what? If you want to go ahead and disable the true conservative blog from using a little AdSense program, well, I don't give two rat's asses. But I am calling on everybody out there in the international community and America. Stop consuming Google products and services and all their little proprietary garbage. All right? And the reason I'm saying that, folks, is because this is the Internet. All right, this is the Internet. I understand people need to make a living out here. I mean, look at Blog Talk Radio. I know I criticize Blog Talk Radio all the time about, you know, their little $20 checks. But they're trying. They're trying to split some kind of revenue with a content producer. Okay? And you've got Google over here wanting you to put their advertisements on your, con on your content. They want you to just put it free of charge, okay? And these idiots can literally just look at the web address that's written in the little Google text ad and put it above their little address bar, and you don't get any credit for it! You don't get any credit for it! So why don't you explain to me, Google, all right? How exactly is one supposed to make $10,000 a month if they can't direct people to your advertisements? Well... You know, I, I, of course, I've been around the Internet for a little while. I wouldn't say I'm a, uh, I've been around since the olden days or anything. But the thing about it, and I can't believe that, that I'm even having this conversation, for heaven's sake. I mean, you got Google, multi-billion dollar company over here, pissing and moaning over 140 bucks. But this is why I know it's not about the money. This is, this is why I know it's not about what I did, okay? It's about what I said. And I exposed Google for the leftist company that they are. And now that the little Chinese investment is going haywire because the Chinese government is basically taking the little proprietary secrets, all right, by hacking into their programs out there. They hacked into the Google mainframe out there in, in China, took away their top secret 
you know, uh, intellectual property uh, proprietary software garbage, and I wouldn't be surprised to see it all over the Internet. So let me tell you something, Google. It's the people that made your stock $600 a share. It's the people's consumption and your ridiculous proprietary crap is what made you what you are today. I mean, you expect content producers, whatever they are, forum post uh, owners, webmasters, all these people, you expect these idiots to post your advertisement free of charge without allowing people to, or, uh, or indirectly encouraging people to, to, to check it out? I mean, it's ridiculous. You're getting free advertisement, you assholes. And that's exactly what I believe Google is trying to capitalize on. They're trying to capitalize off of free advertisement. They're trying to get the young webmasters and the, and the people who have, you know, a couple of thousand people who watch, you know, listen or, or watch their website or use their website, whatever the case might be. They're going to use these, uh, you know, uh, little websites until they finally are able to collect a check. And once they're about to collect a check, well, let's get them the hell out of here. We don't need them anymore. And uh, before I go on to anything further, I find it funny that every time, and I've been on the Internet for at least a good four or five years, all right, surfing, you know, surfing the web, dude. And I have been blind linked, all right? I have been indirectly lied to. I have been misguided to click one of these stupid Google ad AdSense little advertisements. Everybody has. Everybody has, you know, uh, had a stupid pop-up with a dumbass Google AdSense going on. People have been blind linked. If you don't know what blind link means, means it means that if you click a link thinking you're going somewhere, it takes you somewhere completely different. That's blind linking, and it takes you to an advertisement of nothing but a bunch of Google advertisement, AdSense advertisement. It, it's a disgrace. So I'm calling on everybody out there, sell your Google shares, sell them out of here, and you know what, uh, Google, why don't you take your dumb leftist ass back to China, all right? That's what you wanted to begin with. You can't have it both ways, you assholes, all right? You're either down with America and down for freedom and down for the capitalist system, or you're down with that leftist Maoist crap. And by implementing your authoritarianism upon yours truly... I understand that you want to be just like China, huh? You want to implement your own authoritarian rules as you see fit, whenever you see fit, as they come about. And at the same time, you want to play the capitalist game, huh? You want to play the capitalist game, Google, but you're leftist. So I'm calling on everybody out there, sell your Google, you know, sell your Google stocks. I mean, do you honestly think a web company is going to go higher than $600 a share. And if you're an asshole buying Google stock at 600 a share, you're going to lose your ass and you deserve it. Don't, don't, whatever piece of software that you need, I guarantee you folks that the open source community, and for you folks that aren't aware of the open source, and I'm talking about the true open source community, there's programs for everything out there that cost thousands upon thousands of dollars, all right? I mean, there's free versions. There's open source code versions of lots of fancy software. I mean, instead of paying all kinds of money to these ridiculous proprietary software systems, why don't you go out there and endorse the open source code arena? Endorse technology, all right? Endorse this crap, all right? I'm serious. I mean, it's enough of Google, enough of any. We need to tear Google down to size, just like the technological community did back in the day with Microsoft. All right? Microsoft. Remember Microsoft? They, thought they, they, they continued to shit out these dumbass uh, uh, operating systems, these graphic user interface operating systems that were bug-ridden. And all this other crap, and they kept, you know, they kept shitting it out 
uh, another wind blows operating system after another wind blows operating system, and we kept paying for it. And now, all right, now we said, and, and, and the technology community said, hey, look, we're not going to sit here and endorse wind blows anymore. All right, we're going to go ahead and look towards Linux operating systems. And once a small section of the uh, of the technological community out there decided decided to start endorsing Linux, you had open source coders that you know, let me tell you the individuals that are coding out there that are giving away their programs. Those are the biggest world patriots of them all. All right, the biggest world patriots of them all. And I think that when they ask for donations for great programs, you should go and send it. Because, you know, let me tell you, I'm not against proprietary software. I'm not against somebody making the bomb-ass software, them encapsulating their code so no one else can read it. I'm all for that. But what I'm saying is, is that you can't, you know, get on your high horse like Google and Microsoft and all these other, Amazon and all these other big conglomerates that we, the consumer of the world, have created. We created these corporate monsters. And now it's time to chop them down to size. So what I'm asking you to do is not only sell your Google stocks, not only sell you know any other attempting uh, any other uh, attempt at a Big Brother system in the uh, technological community. I, I'm I'm asking you, please go out there and endorse small websites. All right, endorse small websites. And if you think that small websites are unreliable will make a website posting the most reliable small websites on your website it's time to get creative for heaven's sake you understand this is our well not our time i'm an old piece of crap but i'm talking about your time i speak for the youth because my children live through me my grandchildren live through me and i want them to have the opportunities but by god we can't have overlords of the internet okay And look, these idiots, you see, you know, these dumbass little teenagers here, they think that I'm somehow embracing some sort of digital communism by embracing open source, uh, open source technology. No, I am not. It's just going to, uh, you know, facilitate more innovation on a proprietary level. If people want to make proprietary software where they encapsulate their code and you know, try to make it private, that means they have to make that much more innovative of a program that open source coders can't create. Don't you understand that? It, it just it creates innovation. It creates innovation, for heaven's sake. So that's about enough of Google, all right? We, we don't need Google, all right? We don't need Windows either, all right? We, we don't need Macintosh and Apple. We don't need any of this crap. All right, I mean, you know, we, you know, I, I don't know about you, but if you have the latest version of Windows, it sure doesn't look any different from Windows 98 or Windows, what is it, XP or Vista or what, what, what else did they have? They had like 80 different versions of it, for heaven's sake. It's disgusting. So embrace the open source technology out there, right? Embrace open source technology so we can force proprietary systems, so we can force private enterprise within the technological realm to produce products that are worth a crap and not attempt to be overlords of us. Because let me tell you what Google AdSense, the little AdSense system does. They collect little information about you. You know, They collect about what you search about. All right? They collect about what you search about, what you like to look for. And they integrate that in your little cookie section. I don't know if you know what cookies are. You need to do a little Google search about that crap. All right? And, and they try to, you know, obtain so much information about you that whenever you see one of their Google AdSense little advertisements, well, it's going to be geared towards your taste. And what taste is that? Well, whatever you were searching for. All right? Whatever you were searching for, for heaven's sake. So that's what I'm saying, folks. Please, if if you're out there listening in, do not support any more of these big technological companies. Let's start supporting small 
companies, up and coming companies. I mean, don't be a hater, all right? Don't be a damn hater, all right? And, and, and if you're trying to, you know, open up your own web business, come out the pocket for heaven's sake, all right? Come out the pocket for a decent website so you don't look like some piece of trash that just, you know, decided to, you know, learn HTML in about two weeks and, you know, threw some crap together and, and trying to pass that off as legitimate business, all right? Uh, either pay somebody who knows how to build a website or actually, you know, a, a, a pay a service, do something, all right? But we need to start embracing small Internet business. All right? I mean, look at what we've done to Facebook. That's another dumbass little company that has gone completely berserk. And we talked about that back in the day when, you know, Zuckerberg or whatever that stupid, fruity-ass idiot's name is who uh, owns the company, he decided to, uh, you know, throw a little quick change, a, a little change roo on the terms of service there. By allowing you, or allowing him to own your likeness, allowing Zuckerberg to own your pictures, allowing Zuckerberg to own your blogs, to own everything you post on your Facebook. I mean, uh, this is the kind of overlord garbage that we're creating on the Internet. We can't allow it to happen, all right? It's bad enough we're having it happen here in America. We're having it happen in our realities, but... The Internet is our way of communicating our, our ideas freely. This is our world here. I mean, what's the beautiful part about the Internet is that everyone who's in this chat room, all the thousands of people who listen to the True Conservative radio show, they're listening because they actually want to listen. Not because, oh, I'm subscribing to DirecTV or Time Warner or Comcast Cable, and this is all there is to watch. I mean, do you understand? And if somebody else doesn't like this content or the content that's on the Internet, they can create their own. And you see, that's what's so beautiful about this Internet. That's why I get so frustrated when I see people utilize the Internet for, you know, pornography, you know, to become uh, subjects on a Chris Hansen's To Catch a Predator newscast. I mean, this is what the people are using the Internet for when we should be using the Internet for what we're doing right here, listening, talking, learning, reading. This is a battle of ideas, folks. All right? This is a battle of ideas. And if we don't start, you know, reevaluating our ideas and the way we interpret the world and the way we're going to fulfill humanity's progress into the future, we're going to wallow in our own ignorance. And that's why I continue to come up here, folks. And I know that there's people hacking my chat room and, you know, putting all kinds of nasty garbage about me here, you know. But, but the bottom line is they can continue doing that. But you're listening, okay? You're listening. That's what I hope that you're, that, that you're doing right now. You can hack my chat room. You can do all this crap. But you're listening. And let me tell you, anyone who believes in technology, anybody who believes in the Internet and, and the prospects it has to offer for humanity will agree with the previous rant that I just said. Embrace open source technology. Embrace those that are cr being creative. Embrace them. Anyway, folks, I'm going to go ahead and move on to another subject matter. I'm going to talk about uh, Barack Obama today uh, came out and decided to, to – wave its finger at Wall Street and the bankers. And uh, off the Associated Press hot wire, it says, uh, in th this is what it says on the headline, it says, Barack, uh, excuse me, Obama tells banks, we want our money back. We want our money back, as if he's talking for the people. He's the one who gave it to them, and now he's saying, yeah, we want our money back. Are you kidding me, Obama? I mean, what kind of hypocritical idiot are you? With all due respect, Mr. President. I mean, who has given you your advice? Is this Tim Geithner here? I mean, who exactly is giving you your advice? You gave the bankers their money! You gave it to them! Now, I have been alluding to this idea for a long period of time, so I'm going to reintroduce it to the folks that are listening in right now that haven't heard it. 
in my view, I think that this is a deliberate attempt by the liberal regime to justify taxes on high-income uh, individuals. And they're utilizing the disguise of the big bonuses made by the bankers and the Wall Street uh, assholes. They're utilizing their big bonuses that the liberals gave them. They're going to utilize this as substance and fodder to initiate legislation to put caps on how much an individual can make each year, to put a cap on how much an individual can make in a lifetime. I'm telling you folks, you think I'm a damn joke. There is talk about this in the Hill today, and Barack Obama giving this speech, you know, waving his finger at the bankers, is just prelude, in my view, to an initiation that's going to limit the private sector and is going to limit the private individual from earning true wealth again in America. And what for? Why? Why are we taxing? Why are we taxing so much? Because they're spending! They're spending so much! I mean, Barack Obama already asked for another $700 billion for who the hell knows what. He's claiming that it's for the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. But if he was really concerned about the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, he would force the Iraqi parliament to either pay us back for some of the debts we've incurred liberating these people because, you know, they are have a surplus. They do have a surplus in Iraq, folks. All right? They are selling the oil that they're pumping out of their land, and they're selling it on the world market, and they're making a surplus. They're over a trillion dollar surplus! They're over a trillion dollars! But no, you know what uh, Barack Obama and the liberal regime is doing? They are trying to force us, the middle class and the upper middle class, and the private sector to flip the bill for this malarkey, and by God, we can't let it happen again! So don't be fooled, all right? Because I'm just as angry as you are about these bankers and these Wall Street assholes getting their big bonuses. But you have to understand the calculation behind what I am attempting to facilitate here. I and mean, this is what I believe. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think that all this is too much of a goddamn coincidence. The liberal regime initiates this stimulus package 2 bill, all right? And they bail out everybody. They bail out their cronies. They bail out their bureaucratic interests. They bail out all these people. And as a result, they save all these financial institutions from supposedly going belly up from toxic assets. And you and I know that toxic assets means that assholes that financed $250,000 homes on $25,000 a year incomes. That's what toxic assets is. And because the bailouts still gave the company revenue, even though they technically took a loss on the books, all right, because they got a bailout, it still looked as though they made a profit on paper. So through contractual obligation, because every CEO, CFO, every executive in a company signs a contract before they're employed with the company. And in that contractual obligation, uh, it says if the company makes a certain amount of money, a certain amount of profit, that they get so many some odd dollars in bonuses, so many some odd agreed dollars in uh, kickbacks, perks, all this crap. So you see, this is what happened here, folks. The liberal, the liberal regime allowed these, uh, all these corporate interests, not just Wall Street and the bankers. I mean, just take a look at Stimulus Package 2. Take a look at all these bills they've been passing, and you will find out really quick who palms they've been greasing, who they've been kicking back American taxpayer money to. And that's what I'm talking about. They allow these people to raid the American taxpaying system. And once they put the taxpaying money back into the banks, well, the banks then, you know, technically made a profit. Even though they made a horrific loss, because they had taxpayer money, they technically on paper made a profit. So by contractual obligation, the company has to pay the damn executives. And if they don't pay the executives, the executives have the legal right to take the company to court. And the liberals knew this. The liberals knew it. So now that the big-time bigwigs of Wall Street and the bankers are out here 
catching all the taxpaying dollar bonuses and all this other malarkey. Now the president's coming out saying, well, we need a humongous, disgusting, despicable tax so that we can get, quote-unquote, our money back. Our money back. I mean, do you understand what kind of sick, disgusting garbage this is? And for you folks that are in the chat room, uh, somebody is hacking my chat room. So if there's idiots posting all kinds of filthy, disgusting garbage, um, you know, um, um, I, I, there's nothing I can do about it. These stupid, dumb little kids and these liberals and these morons are going to continue to do what they do, and that's all there is to it. So just disregard, all right? Just disregard what's happening here. But anyway, folks, I'm I'm sincerely uh, upset. All right, I'm sincerely upset that the president thinks that the American people are a bunch of idiots, and maybe they are a bunch of idiots. All right, maybe they are a bunch of idiots because they're falling hook, line, and sinker with the idea that oh yeah, we need to tax everybody. We need to tax these people so we can get our money back. Why did we have to give our money to these people to begin with? How about that? I mean, why, why did we do that? I mean, why did we have to give these idiots our money? Well, why, did we, why did these bankers and these Wall Street ass clowns, why did they have to take our cash? I mean, can somebody ask, answer me that question, you piece of crap? They can't. Anyway, folks, we're in the second hour of a true conservative radio program. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. Uh, once again, these programs are sporadic, so please add me to your following on Twitter. Ghost Politics is the name to follow. Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores. And, of course, uh, go to the blog. I mean, there's no need to... Just check out the new blogs that I'm posting. I'm posting free. There's no need to click any advertisements anymore because, well, you know, Google decided to disable my little AdSense account because they're little leftist jerk nut ass clowns that are probably taking it up the poop chute to get their prostate massage from the inside out. Uh, so, but just go to the blog anyway to, to read the content, read the latest blogs. I'm going to, you know, be updating it more frequently. Ghost ghostpolitics.blogspot.com that's ghostpolitics.blogspot.com uh, and of course folks uh, please give me a call if you have anything to say here if you disagree if you agree give me a call 646-652-4869 is the number to call here uh, but once again folks don't believe the hype when it comes to Obama and him, you know, waving his fingers at the bankers in the Wall Street. and Oh, we need our money back, baby. You're the person that gave them the money, Mr. President. You signed off on the last, you're the last signature that gave these people a rate on the American taxpaying system. I mean, if these Wall Street bankers have to pay it back, I think that, you know, the idiot that collected $90 million to study pig odor, I think he needs to give it back. You know, I think, uh, you know, the, the that dumbass, uh, what was it, $25 million, $30 million to save a rat in San Francisco, I think those idiots need to give the money back. Why, why don't we start looking there, Mr. President? I mean, why don't we start looking there for a second? It just makes me sick. It's just disgusting. It, it really is, for heaven's sake. I'm going to take some callers here. Six four six six five two four eight six nine nine zero one. Are you there? Yeah, uh, I was going to actually talk about. Uh, oh, shut up! I remember you. I can, I can, I can hear the fruitness in your voice. You've already given me about two or three prank calls for heaven's sake, and they both suck the chrome off of a '57 Chevy bumper. Get out of here. Three one eight. You're on the air. Go fuck yourself, Google. Bitch. Is that it? Is that it? I'll call you a bitch right in front of your tits. Huh? You're a bitch. Huh? You're a bitch. Huh? Don't talk shit about Google. Huh? Go read a mesh! Yeah, well, he, he sounded a little angry and then he hung up. 
Then he hung up for heaven's sake. You see, this is America. This is America right here. All right? This is America. Did you hear this idiot? I mean, he actually attempted to try to, you know, threaten me uh, with some sort of uh, ridiculous uh, 80 years worth of booze and smoke voice and thought that, uh, I don't know, that was going to intimidate me in some fashion. You know, I mean, give me a break, you milky liquor. We couldn't even understand you, all right? Maybe if you were, you know, not serving so many, uh, servicing so many glory holes out there, maybe you wouldn't have that problem with your throat there, boy. All right, 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Um, once again, folks, uh, I, I want you to please spread the word about the True Conservative Radio Program. The official website is blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. All right, so please uh, uh, spread the word. Now that I've basically put it all on the table about Obama and his hypocrisy with this we want our money back finger waving to the bankers in Wall Street, I want to go ahead and segue to another. I'm going to segue to another subject matter. I'm going to talk a little bit about Hollywood. That's right. I'm going to talk about Hollywood here, about how they were able to suggest to America to be the absolute uh, ignorant, gluttonous, sexual deviant idiots that they've become. And with the innovation of the Internet, and it's funny that we were talking about the Internet a little while ago, uh, with the inter innovation of the Internet, we don't really need Hollywood any longer. All right? We don't need Hollywood any longer. We don't need you people. I mean, wh why are these idiots still making $20 million a film, for heaven's sake? All right? Why are these idiots still making all this money per film? I mean, wh wh what difference does it make? These people are morons, and I hate Hollywood. All right, now, I I'll say it again. I hate Hollywood. It has ruined America, and the only thing it's good for is producing a bunch of uh, sick, perverted teenagers like Lindsay Mo diving on the muff Lohan, all right, uh, uh, Britney shaved my bald head and my bald twat spears over here. All right, I mean, you know, you got Keela Tequila. Oh, isn't that a piece of work, huh? Isn't that a piece of work, for heaven's sake? Keela Tequila, huh? a product of Hollywood out here. Huh? Oh, great. What I'm saying is, is we don't need Hollywood any longer. We don't need them. Uh, we have the Internet. We have individuals that can create their own content, and I am strongly advising you folks, please, all right, please go out and create your own content. Go out and continue to spread the word about your content, my content, everybody, all right? So go out and uh, create the content, because we need to destroy Hollywood, in my opinion. And how do we destroy Hollywood? Well, not by going out and, you know, having dumbass Avatar going out there and making, was it, a billion dollars? I mean, why are we going to the movies any longer? I mean, you know, give me a break, all right? I mean, every time I've ever went to the movies, I've been utterly disappointed. I've been utterly disappointed. All right. I mean, look, look at these people. These people are like, oh, it's it's a good movies, Ghost. Oh yeah, I love whacking my little Peter Papa, uh, to, watching Avatar. Oh yeah, of E.T. phone home. Oh yeah, look, they're super bad. Oh yeah, I like Matt Sarah. Oh yeah, Matt Sarah is just such a great actor, isn't he? Oh god, he's like 50 years old and still looks like he popped out of the ass crack of some 15 year old bastard. Oh, yeah. I mean, give me a break, folks. We don't need to be forced, these directors, that they're shoving down our holes. We don't need to be forced to, you know, think that Nicolas Cage is a good actor, all right? Nicolas Cage is not a good actor. All right? I mean, we, we don't need this crap. So I'm, I'm strongly encouraging everyone out there, embrace the Internet, embrace technology. I understand HP, Sony, and a couple other computer companies are actually creating flat-screen, touch-screen TVs up to about 30 inches uh, 
uh, 30 inches uh, that connect to the Internet and to your cable provider. I mean, soon enough, we're going to integrate and converge all these technologies into one. We're already seeing the uh, phases of it at this point. All right? So anyway, 646-652-4869. I'm going to go ahead and take another call here. Uh, 215, you're on the air. Oh, I'm on? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, uh, hey there, Ghost. Uh, well, I, I'm actually surprised because I wasn't able to get through before because all the, you know, spammers or whatever you call them. I guess hackers, whatever. But, yeah, uh, I've been listening to your show for a while. And, yeah, I am an internet kind of guy, but first and foremost, I'm an American, and I do appreciate a guy like you, you know, putting the conservative movement out there because being from uh, Philadelphia and everything, especially growing up in the 90s and stuff like that, you don't really get a true sense of what the conservative movement is all about. And really what you hear is, is that they're all for the status quo and Bush this and anything like that. You really don't hear the point of view that you put out there. So I really do appreciate that sort of thing uh, that you're doing right now. Well, you know, I, I actually appreciate your call. We usually don't get calls that friendly in nature, but uh, it sounds like you're a young uh, aspiring conservative, a young aspiring political young gent, and I strongly advise you to continue to pursue your political endeavors, because the, the, the conservative movement, I'm, I don't speak for the Republican Party, but I speak for the conservative movement. They, we're not for status quo. We're about independent thinking. We're about free market capitalist systems. All right? We're about the Constitution. All right? That's what we're about. We're not about, uh, you know, some kind of malarkey out here that just, you know, uh, tickles their ass crack and, you know, call themselves some certain name because they all congregate together at the local Denny's every Sunday. All right? So anyway, uh, I understand, you know, there's 48 minutes left in the program. I, I do understand that I have a lot of young listeners in the program, a lot of young people who listen to my program, whether live or in the archive. And I know that uh, these idiots are so bombarded with Hollywood innuendo, Hollywood suggestion, uh, you know, all kinds of just, you know, absolute filth. And it's no coincidence why you have these young characters hacking my chat room, uh, prank calling me up like a bunch of uh, Internet butt stalkers, uh, because they don't know any better. All right? I mean, they're, they're stupid. I mean, they're being, uh, they're being put forth into suggestion by Hollywood. And I think that Hollywood needs to be completely taken out. All right? I mean, just, just and, and how do we take it out? Let's stop going to the movies. All right? How about that? Let's stop going to the movies. Uh, let's stop going and, and, and pretending that these idiots deserve all the millions of dollars that they don't deserve. Let's stop pretending that acting is such a hard thing, for heaven's sake. I mean, do you understand that acting is not hard, all right? Acting is not hard. All right, look, there's a camera in front of me, right? And I'm supposed to act dramatic, right? Okay. Oh, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> and cut. All right, I'm I'm at. I mean, this is what acting is. Do you understand that? This is what acting is, and these assholes are getting $20 million dollars. A film for this crap? You got assholes actually directing and making who the hell knows how much? It's stupid. It's stupid. Acting is not hard, all right? And if you're one of these, I'm a Thestian. I'm a Thestian that, that worked in the theater. Yeah. I, I worked in the theater, and I did Summer Stock. I did Romeo and Juliet. And I, I did all that stuff. I'm a Thestian, yes. I'm a Thestian. Uh, you know, those fruit bowls, well, you know, if you actually think that, you know, you went to college and actually obtained a degree that was worth two rat's asses, I mean, you might as well use the degree for rolling paper because you're not going to get anywhere with a theater arts degree. All right? I mean, give me a break. But since I know that most of these idiots out here, all they do is listen to, you know, Dumbass movies, dumbass TV shows, power of suggestion, rap and hip-hop music. Let me tell you something. I hate rap and hip-hop music. I don't like it one bit because not only can anybody do it, because let me tell you something, anybody can rap. I can rap, okay, folks? 
<laughs> I mean, I don't consider anything I can do anything special. So I don't think rap is that big a deal. All right? I mean, rap is just a bunch of crap. What you're doing is you're buying the image put forth by Hollywood that is built by the individuals that created these characters like Fitty Cent. And Eminem and Dr. Dre. I mean, Dr. Dre, for heaven's sake, was a disco singer. How can you be a disco singer and a gangster in the same life? It doesn't make sense. Because it's a lie, folks. Don't you understand that? All this crap that comes out of Hollywood is a bunch of garbage. All right? It's utter crap. And look, I've got people sitting here saying, Oh, rap ghost, rap, if you think it's so great, why don't you get on and just rap something? Well, let me tell you something. I actually think that rap is 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 easy. All right. I mean, I, I mean, well, what is rap? Would you put a you know a whole bunch of words together that rhyme and, and you know behind a beat? I mean, big deal. I mean, you can make beats now with like little Fruity Loop programs, and you know, uh, uh, you know, you shit it out of a damn uh, you know a, a CD burner, and lo and behold, you're a rapper. All right? I mean, that's all there is to it. Look at these people. They're like rap goes. Come on and rap. Well, you know what? I might rap, all right? I might just rap, and you want to know why I'm going to rap? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not going to rap if you continue to hack my uh, damn chat room, you milky lickers. All right, so if you're going to continue to hack my chat room, I'm not going to rap crap. All right, so whoever keeps doing that, you know, stop being some, you know, uh, anal retentive, red-headed, four-eyed, freckle-faced, beaten stepchild that's got anal warts, and stop, you know, stop hacking my chat room. All right. Now I'm gonna rap here, but I I just want to make sure that you know this chat room of mine isn't gonna get hacked any again. Get me la, 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 la. ain't gonna get hacked anymore. I'm sorry, I'm doing 80 different things at the same time for heaven's sake. But I'm telling you right now, I am going to rap here in about five minutes. But before I rap, before I rap, I want everybody to understand why I'm rapping. All right. I want everybody to understand why I'm actually entertaining this ridiculous nonsense, okay? So stop hacking my chat room, listen for a five, about five minutes, and then I'll bust a cipher, okay? For all you idiots that are into that urban vernacular, right? I'll bust a cipher! Now, the reason that I'm going to do this little rap, stupid little freestyle is what they call it, off-the-head rapping, is to show not only that rap and hip-hop is a bunch of crap, but in hopes of sparking synapses within the young community that is listening to the True Conservative Radio Program, I get hundreds of emails from these individuals that are participating in these prank calls, that are involved with the 4chan and E-bombs and, you know, these Howard Stern ass lickers, all these people. They email me, and they tell me that they were directed by these morons to, to prank call me, but once they heard the content... Once they heard the substance of my commentary, they couldn't do it because I was telling the truth. Because I was telling the truth. And you're damn right I'm telling the truth. I'm as serious as a damn heart attack. I'm as serious as a damn heart attack. And the reason that I am going to attempt to rap today is because that's the only thing that penetrates through the thick, numb skulls of the youth of America. And what I'm attempting to do is inspire these youth. Inspire them to stand up and take action. Why don't you read about those stupid Woodstock leftists? Why don't you read about those damn leftist terrorists? Read about all these ass clowns that your parents looked up to, that this liberal regime looked up to. I mean, look at what they did. That's why they're in power, you idiots. That's why they're taking advantage of our government, because they got involved. They got involved. Now it's your time to get involved. But don't get involved for communism. Don't get involved for socialism or any of this other hold-my-hand kumbaya garbage, which ends up being a totalitarian government in the end. Why don't you take up and go out and stand up for capitalism, free market capitalism. Stand up, American young youth, for the Constitution. How about that? Stand up for the Constitution, for your Bill of Rights, for your rights. For your rights that were accorded to us by our forefathers, 
that cared. That cared about our future, you asshole. So, what I'm saying to the youth is, is the reason that I'm, you know, uh, doing this stupid little rap cipher is in hopes of penetrating your psyche to, to, to let you understand that I'm not just some old man here that is living some old values. All right? I understand exactly what you young people are being exposed to, and it's a bunch of filth. It's a bunch of disgusting, despicable, uh, I mean, horrid pictures and images and audio. It's no wonder why you're so ignorant. It's no wonder why you're so mentally lost. It's no wonder why you are lured by dumbass websites to prank call other people so that you can give them content. You can give them content for free. It's no wonder. So once again, folks, I will, I will hope that when I conduct this stupid little rap song or whatever I plan to do here in the next couple of minutes, I hope that this inspires you, all right? I hope that this inspires you to go out there and do something for your country, do something for America. And if you're not an American, go out there and participate in your government. Organize. Go out there and say, hey, wait a minute. I want the capitalist system. I want what I put in. All right? I don't care about losers that are just going to sit back and turn off their mental capacity and expect working people to take care of their asses. Why? Just because they're there? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, what I'm going to do here, and I can't believe that I'm even entertaining this idea. I can't believe that I'm even doing this. But I am going to bust uh, a little bit of a rap here. And unfortunately, we've got uh, some idiot named Susie Cream Cheese at uh, IP address 69.171.161.137. Spamming all kinds of N words and stuff, so uh, it, it's been documented in the chat. All right, oh, we got another idiot, Ann and uh, what the hell's his name? Annoying or whatever. He's from the United States. Seven four seven nine or seven four point seven nine point one six two point four three. Okay. I mean, don't you idiots understand that I'm not joking when it comes to the N-word being scrolled, all right? Being scrolled in the chat room. Don't you understand that that jeopardizes my show, you assholes? Don't you understand that that jeopardizes my show? I mean, seriously, and I, I'm glad Susie Cream Cheese decided to stop scrolling, all right? I'm glad. So anyway, uh, once again, we're going to go, and uh, I'm going to bust a flow here, all right? I'm going to bust a flow, and hopefully, just hopefully, that it'll spark some synapses in, in you idiots, all right? It'll spark some synapses in you morons. Okay, Susie Cream Cheese, I mean, 69.171.161.137. I hope somebody pings your ass off the internet right now, all right? Oh, and then Finn, you want some too, Finn? Huh? Oh, okay, hey, Finn, okay, uh, 131.204.254.271, or point seven one. Let me repeat that again. 131.204.254.271. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I am going to bust a flow, okay? Now, uh, let me go ahead and uh, post. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and uh, say this. Uh, or hold on. Let me, let me see what I'm going to bust a flow to. Let's put it that way. How about that? How about, let me see what kind of beat I'm going to do here. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what. I like Birdman, all right? And anybody who's never heard of Birdman, I strongly advise you to go 
and, uh, you know, iTunes and check out Birdman. He's, he's uh, part of the old Cash Money Millionaire crew, okay? And the reason I like Birdman is because, yeah, he raps about a, about a, about a bunch of garbage. Don't get me wrong, but uh, he's a capitalist, all right? He's a capitalist, for heaven's sake. And I love capitalism. Don't you understand that? I love capitalism. I love people that understand that, hey, look, uh, you know, even though I was from the ghetto, it's it's no longer about the ghetto. I want to live large, you know. I want to live large, you know. I want to sip on Cristal all day, you know. Birdman. Anyway, I, I think I'm going to play that little beat called Stuntin' Like My Daddy. All right? Stuntin' Like My Daddy. So, here, let me go ahead and play it first, see if... Uh, my uh, my voice can actually uh, go over the track so everybody can hear me, so I can bust a little flow here. So let me go ahead. Uh, can we get some music, please, here? All right. Can everybody hear me over this beat? Can everybody hear me? Are we nice and clear here? I mean, could you hear me kind of clearly here? All right, let me stop that. Can everybody hear me kind of clearly? So if I bust a flow over that, everybody's going to be able to hear it, right? It's going to be clear because I want to let everybody know how easy it is to rap, all right? It's 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 freaking easy, all right? Ugh. I'm a little nervous here because I am, you know, rapping off the head. And um, let's go ahead and uh, – oh, you need it louder? Do we need it louder or no? No, I don't think we need it louder. I think it's good, right? Is it good? Yes, it's good. All right, here we go. We're going to try to bust a flow here. I don't know really what I don't really know where to start. But I guess we'll figure it out, right? <laughs> here we go. Hey, and remember the beat is Stunting Like My Daddy by Birdman. So for all you uh, rapper idiots that like that kind of crap, uh, you know, give him the credit because this is uh, you know, kind of a capitalist uh, you know, song here. So uh, can we get the beat going on again, please? Goes out to all you liberals and all you feminists. You don't want none of ghosts, baby. You don't want none of ghosts, baby. Here we go. Well, look who it is. It's the man they call Ghost, the host with the most. And I don't mean to brag or boast. People hating because I talk about the president, the fruity liberals, and the illegal Mexicans. They all say that ghost is a dangerous man Cause I speak that politics that they don't understand True conservative to the heart just to let them know Capitalism to the soul to the bullet hole I'm living rich, sitting fat, but I want more I'm living lavish and I ain't got no time for the pole My ass bleeds for single mothers of eight But like Marie said, let them bitches eat cake I'm not heartless, I'm like Rob Hobbs in the old politics book called Leviathan. I'm not cold, I'm a humanitarian. I want to see human progress to the very end. Ooh, man. Damn. That's pretty hard there, man. Woo. Man, hold on, let me stop there. Let me stop there. I'm a little out of breath after that. And not only that, I got hacked again, so uh, we got to stop the flow. All right, I got, I got I got hacked again here with the little chat room, so we got to stop the flow there. But uh, <clears throat> I hope everybody appreciated that, huh? I hope everybody appreciated that. But let me tell you something. All right, let me tell you something. Rap ain't crap. All right, rap ain't crap. All right, and I'm a true capitalist, so, you know, hopefully everybody, that'll show you that, you know, I'm just busting out the head here and just, you know, rapping like it ain't nothing. All right, I can do it again, but we got people in here, uh, you know, screwing up my chat room, trying to log in and doing all kinds of crap. So, uh, you know, until these idiots stop, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to stop it. All right. All right, we're not going to stop it. I'm, I'm, I'm a capitalist and that's all there is to it. I tell you what. I will bust a flow. See, see, idiots think that I wrote this down. I didn't write it down, all right? I will bust a flow right now. Just put words on the screen, all right? 
Make sure that these damn hackers don't hack the stupid chat room, all right? I put words on the screen, and I will bust a full... That, that's how easy rap is. Don't you understand that? That's how easy rap is, for heaven's sake. All right? So, for all you folks that are like, yeah, baby, rap is great, man. Yeah. It's nothing. All right? It's garbage. All right. So, we're going to go ahead here. Let me... Let me uh. Let me get this idiot out of the chat room real quick. See you later there, Susie Cream Cheese, you freaking milky licker. All right, one more time, and we're, I'm just going to say random things. So if it sounds kind of weird, if you're listening to the archive, uh, I'm just rapping whatever these idiots are busting on the chat room. All right, whatever they're putting words on the screen, that's what I'm going to do. So let me go ahead and put the Stuntin' Like My Daddy by Birdman one more time here. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Busting the flow, and I'm letting all those rappers know it ain't nothing. This rap game ain't nothing. Yeah, here we go. All right. Look who it is. Everybody knows it's the man who gets wicked with a microphone in his hand. Almost messed up on that lyric, but who gives a damn? Because everybody has to hear it. LOL is on the damn screen, and everyone knows that I'm unseen. It's the OG ghost, like I said before, and I'll kick your mother's ass straight out the door because uh, she left your daddy, and now your single parent is. Don't try to talk shit because you know where you're hearing it. Right here on blogtalkradio.ghost. Or should I say the host with the most, yo? Oh my God, putting Prop 8 on the screen once again. I said before I'm unseen. I repeated another line. But who gives a damn because everybody has to rhyme. Man. Oh. I'm blowing off the head and I don't give a damn. And everybody knows who the fuck I am. I don't mean to curse, but that's what you know when you... Hold on. Stop it. Stop. See, we're getting hacked again, folks. We're getting hacked again. As a matter of fact, uh, let me see. What's the time on here? All right. Maybe I should just cut this show short because we got a a bunch of ass lickers in here hacking the chat room. All right. Hacking the chat room, thinking, uh, you know, they've got some, you know, big cojones because they downloaded some Trojan horse virus ridden program. And that's all there is to it. It's it's a disgrace. It's unbelievably a disgrace. All right. And for all you people that are that are out here, uh, you know, thinking that you're cool doing this, you're not doing a damn thing. All right. You're not doing a damn thing. All right. Now I know that I've made a lot of enemies out here, and from what I understand, I think that uh, you know there's a lot of people wanting to know who uh, Ghost is, so that they can you know attempt to try to inflict some bodily harm on me. Uh, but you know what? I really don't care. All right, I, I'll, it ain't nothing for me to kick a man's ass. Let me let me put that first and foremost. I've been getting a lot of hate mail as of late because you know these liberals and these feminists know that I am kind of fashioning the human conscience, and all the listeners that are listening to me, I'm refashioning their human conscience to understand that we're not going to fall hook, line, and sinker with this misguided empathy. With this misguided compassion. We're not going to do that, all right? There, look, I don't feel bad for the poor in America. I don't care, right? I don't care about idiots who are on their knees begging for a damn stimulus package check. I don't care. But let me tell you, you know, if it were up to the stupid, dumbass Americans that, you know, finance $250,000 homes on $25,000 a year incomes, if it were these idiots that are indebting themselves all kinds of hundreds of thousands of dollars because, well, you know, they're fiscally irresponsible, and now they want the government to give them their lifestyles back. Uh, you know, you want you to just go ahead and wait in line, you know, with all the Wall Street bankers and all the, the liberal cronies and all this other nonsense, right? All right, why don't you just go ahead and do that? Why don't you just go ahead and uh, and, 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 and just... Go with your liberal cronies, all right? And, and you know what you can do? You can wait in that line, all right? You can wait in that line like they did in Detroit this past October, right? When they said that they had a little bit of money to hand out to homeless people, all right? 
like 3,500 homeless people and 35,000 showed up? 35,000 showed up, for heaven's sake? Well, they can wait in that line until they hear their number. And when they hear their number, come on down. It's your turn to collect an entitlement. Oh, yes, we're giving away stimulus package checks and housing voucher programs. Oh, yeah, we're giving away free Internet connections. Oh, yeah, come on in for Obama's cash. If you want it, come and get it, courtesy of the American taxpayer. Come on down. Shut it off. Shut it off. I mean, you know, I'm serious. That, that's what these idiots want. They just want to be, uh, you know, take a number and you know, they want to go into a bread line. They want to go into a bread line, for heaven's sake. I'm not going into no bread line. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. 616, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, how you doing, Bill? What's going on? I just uh, wanted to call and uh, see kind of your thoughts on uh uh, Ron Paul and his view towards the uh, Fed, uh, Federal Reserve, um, and how he, he wants to see it audited. And I was wondering if that's in line with your views or kind of what you think should be done. Well, I'm glad you uh, had that question because uh, I get that posed often. Uh, but I think that by auditing the Federal Reserve, it, it's basically going to throw the transition of monetary power uh, back to the government's hand uh, in a sense, throwing the economy into absolute upheaval. And I'm completely against auditing the Federal Reserve. I mean, uh, why do, why should we audit the Federal Reserve, for heaven's sake? It was the people's responsibility and the government's responsibility to oversee the Federal Reserve. All right, but instead, we had a complacent people who decided to go and, you know, buy TV dinners and the pet rock and plasma screen TVs and not have any concern uh, about government affairs, monetary affairs, have no concern about anything but their own fat, gluttonous asses. Meanwhile, we had the government spending out the wazoo. All right, we had the government spending out the wazoo to for entitlements, for pork barrel spending, for all this nonsense. All right, and what was the Fed supposed to do? What was the Federal Reserve supposed to do? What just just keep the monetary system intact so that the whole damn country can go into a depression? Because the government decided to spend more than it was worth. Well, the Federal Reserve did what both parties that they you know, answer to, which is the government and the people, they did what the government and the people wanted them to do. They kept printing out more money. They kept printing out more money, for heaven's sake. And now you've got Ron Paul and these Alex Jones ass clowns out here trying to blame the money, uh, trying to blame the blame on the Federal Reserve as if it was its fault for the, the, the situation that we currently have ourselves in. It's a disgrace. It's, it's disgusting. I mean, do you really think, and, and, and hold on, uh, I think you're still on the phone there, 616. Do you really think that if we allowed our government to print our money that we would be in a better situation? Because that's what Ron Paul's proposing. Is that what you're suggesting? It, it's not what I'm suggesting. I just want some sort of uh, measurement for inflation. You know, inflation hasn't been measured in quite some time. And that's really what's uh, what's kind of my fear is hyperinflation coming to uh, fruition through all these, uh, you know, the printing of the money and these, you know. But but why like, why is the Federal Reserve printing out money? Well, I mean, I <laughs> to to give it to the people. I mean, yeah, well, well, of course, people. but I mean, you know, why why would the Fed uh, just decide to go against modern money mechanics? And still, just you know, a, a print a humongous fiat currency system. Why would they do that? You tell me. I mean, the value. Of the I, I think I've already told you, son. I, I told you because it was because the government was blowing all this cash for the past thirty, forty years. All right, and they've been blowing all this money. And the American people, what have they been doing? They've been playing with their Peter Poppers. All right, uh, that they're out there, you know, making prank calls for E Bombs World and and 4chan, making other people rich. All right. I mean, they, they weren't concerning themselves about political matters and monetary matters. So as a result, the people that were concerning themselves, the politicians and you know these greasy uh, assholes in Wall Street, well, they decided to take it upon themselves and, and utilize the ignorance of not only the American people but the complacency of the government. And now you got some old idiot named you know uh, borderline liberal like Ron Paul who's going to sit here and suggest that we should audit the Federal Reserve. Giving monetary policy back to the American government? Absolutely not. 
Well, let me tell you first here, Ghost. I just I don't really agree with you know all of your political views, but I'd never insult you and call you an idiot. So I'd, I'd hope that you could show you know the same respect for me. But um, I just wanted your your view on it because I'm interested in finding out the different political views. Um, so no, I, 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 I'm glad that you I called up about it, sir. I'm really glad you called up because let me tell you, it's very confusing when you have so many people trying to point the blame at the Federal Reserve. Now, I'm not trying to say that the Federal Reserve, you know, didn't, you know, that is completely negligent, but they are an independent monetary system, which is supposed to be governed by the government and the people. And how it's being governed is our our monetary actions. That's how it's governed, our monetary actions. And what were we doing? We were getting credit. You know, we we were, you know, uh, too involved with consumption. What was the government doing? It was too involved with blowing our money. So what was the Federal Reserve doing? It had to oblige both parties by printing such a a large amount of fiat currency. Don't you think, though, that there is a little bit too much power given to the green spans and and the head of the Fed? Don't you think that at least? Absolutely not, because we need an independent uh, monetary system that can be able to not only regulate – who can independently regulate the uh, monetary notes outstanding, but we need somebody who understands the – uh, concept of economics to be able to uh, know when to call this revenue or call these outstanding notes back or when to keep them flourishing. And as a result, uh, we need individuals like – I'm not saying that Bernanke should be uh, Time Magazine of the Year or anything, but we need these individuals to practice uh, monetary policy that's not only conducive for American uh, growth economically but for progress and technological innovation. But what people fail to understand that it's not – the Federal Reserve that's stopping people from being uh, prosperous, it's our government. It's the government and the bureaucracy that it's created. You know, I mean, you have to think, the average bureaucrat makes 70000 a year. That's 70000 in taxpaying dollars. That's 70000 that uh, 70, extra dollars that the, the Federal Reserve has to print out. Meanwhile, in the private sector, the average American person makes a little over 35000 So there's a big discrepancy there, and it's not – the Federal Reserve's fault, it's the government's fault. Right. I mean, I was never finger-pointing saying it was the Federal Reserve's fault. I just said I kind of wanted a gauge for inflation, and I thought that maybe auditing the Fed would give us an accurate reading on that, seeing as how our currency is no longer backed by gold. Well, I mean, and that's another thing. I mean, why why should we back our currency by gold? I, I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying now that it's no longer backed by gold, we came up with inflation to measure that. Inflation hasn't been uh, measured in over 10 years now. I, I beg to differ with you. I think you know, inflation has been measured tremendously by many economic uh, – uh, many people who study economics, uh, many economic professors, many people have constructed theories on inflation. I mean I don't mean to be uh, going off on a rant about uh, economics here, but since, peop- since you are uh, a little bit concerned about it, sir, 616, I really appreciate your, your, your call. But you have to think about it, all right? Ever since the, the Federal Reserve was enacted in 1913, the price of wages, uh, the wage labor in America, gradually went up. It, it, it gradually went up, and it was a steady uprise in the cost of labor up until about 1970. Uh, I would say like the mid-70s. All right? And it was then that people just became complacent completely, and basically uh, individuals themselves became so – uh, enthralled with consumerism and credit, that they weren't paying attention to their own financial interest within the private sector. And as a result, individuals became complacent, so they just decided, you know, well, since I'm not going to negotiate with my boss to, you know, uh, give me a better salary with uh, uh, the rate of inflation, uh, I guess I'm going to go out and take, about, take out a bunch of credit. All right? So what happened in the 70s to now, all right, well, this. Uh, you know, lack of progress in wages from the 70s to now is the, uh, the the unfortunate fact about that is that people got paid less, they worked more because they had to work overtime to you know pay for all their outstanding debts and all their credit and all this other nonsense. So as a result, corporate America got more productivity for less amount of money. And of course, corporate America is not going to sit here and say, "Oh, uh, hey, uh, you're working too hard for less money." Uh, you know, maybe you need to stop working very hard, or maybe you need to renegotiate your, your, you know, your contract. No, 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 that's not what they did. No, the American people, instead of going out and saying, "Hey, wait a minute," uh, you know, my pay is not going up with the price of inflation. They decided to go out and take out a bunch of credit. 
all right? They took out a bunch of credit, and as a result, uh, the corporate interest gathered up a bunch of capital, all right? I mean, you know, uh, the 80s up until the 90s, you know, corporate America, you know, the profits of corporate America was so disgusting, all right? I mean, it was just so un- unimaginable that what did they do with that capital that was built from, you know, the 70s to the 90s when uh, productivity on the worker level was going higher and the wage was going lower? What did they do with those profits? Well, they blew it during the dot-com boom. I mean, you remember these venture capitalist assholes? They were given $150 million to anybody with a website, all right? And that's, I mean, you know, that's really the tipping point of our economy, if you want to truth be told about it. I mean, all the American capital was put into these uh, these crack pipe ideas, you know, these Internet uh, uh, websites, these technology, and they oversaturated the market. And as a result, a lot of the companies that made capital during the high productivity levels of human labor, or of, of, of American labor, rather, uh, these individuals uh, basically went belly up. They went belly up, and that was the dot-com boom, and a lot of people lost their money. So what happened? Well, now uh, uh, Bill Clinton kind of saw this coming, so what did he do? Uh, well, he decided to go ahead and sign a bill that allowed the deregulation of the financial industry. All right, And once the deregulation of the financial industry implemented itself, the political people, the liberals in power, and everybody else that was in power was putting it in the American people's heads that they deserved a home, that it was an American right that everybody gets a home. So because the deregulation of the financial markets, uh, we allowed everybody from loan officers to you know all these idiots to give these loans out to all these ass clowns, and, there was, and, and, and that was it. That was it. Anyway, uh, John Calhoun, are you there? Hey, John Calhoun, are you there? Hey, John Calhoun, are you there? I mean, you're on the air. Well, I tried. Anyway, how about 573, you're on the air. Uh, Is that me? Yeah, it's you. What's going on? Uh, Nothing much, sir. Uh, I have to say... uh, you know, hear me out. First of all, I am one of the Annans, and I am from E Bomb's world, but I'm not here to prank you. I promise. Uh, I am a conservative. I am somebody who needs health care and um, uh, welfare, but I do not believe the government should be giving that to me. So I completely agree with you on most subjects. Uh, but I mean, you came out and you started dissing movies, and i got to really disagree with you on that. I think that one thing, especially in a recession like this, something that can uh, really raise the spirits of the American people is film, um, maybe not Hollywood film, like, you know, like the G.I. Joes or, or um, uh, you know, these Hollywood movies, like necessarily like Avatar. I see, Avatar is an American movie, but it is, it is sort of Hollywood, so I understand what you're talking about, but these... In these these small movies, these comedies, I think it, it can really uplift the spirits of the American people. Uh, I'm not exactly well. Let me stop you right there, okay? Because I completely disagree. I think that all these Hollywood movies have done nothing but transition our people from uh, that that once had about 30 or 40 years ago moral integrity, who the the the, the social arena in America about 30 or 40 years ago was that of if anyone got pregnant out of wedlock, they were banished and ostracized. Uh, if anyone uh, decided to go out and get a divorce, I mean, you know, they were looked upon with, uh, you know, a weird look. I mean, we had moral ethos within our community. And what Hollywood and what, uh, you know, all these movies have done is they have uh, induced our people into becoming the ridiculous heathens and uh, the disgusting Neanderthals and the uh, despicable gangster idiots and uh, the drug addicts and the prostitutes and the derelicts. I mean, everything that we've become. I mean, it's no coincidence that divorce out here is the majority. I mean, single-parent families are the majority. Uh, you know, we, 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 just, we have all these things going on here. And what people just don't seem to understand is that it is being induced by Hollywood. 
I mean, if you watch these little stupid chick flicks that all these dumb bimbos go out with their girlfriends and watch, I mean, they are putting forth in these chick flick movies I mean, unimaginable ideas. Ideas and life scenarios that can never be attained. And you've got all these stupid, dumb feminist bimbos out here actually believing that because something they saw on a movie, uh, you know, how some guy was singing to her from a, uh, you know, uh, for, from an apartment balcony, you know, singing. I mean, it doesn't work like that, you dumb bimbos, all right? I mean, this is Hollywood, and this is why I'm saying Hollywood needs to go. All right, and and for all these folks that like rap music, why don't you listen to a Chuck D song? Uh, Chuck D was a a man that uh, rapped with that stupid, dumbass, greasy idiot named Flavor Flav. Uh, listen to Chuck D song that says, Bur- uh, I think I think it's called "Burn Hollywood Burn." Listen to that song for a little bit, and uh, you know may- maybe you'd have a different idea of Hollywood. Uh, why don't you read also about McCarthy, McCarthyism? and how liberal education systems demonize McCarthy as if he was some sort of a, I, I don't know, a crazy person, when in actuality he exposed the communist agenda that was hidden within the Hollywood community. I mean, this was the man that exposed it, folks. Don't you understand that? McCarthy was the man that exposed the communism that was hidden from within Hollywood. So this little leftist idea, this... Uh, whole crap that Hollywood's trying to induce, you know, uh, uh, ruin our social landscape, uh, induce us to be in nothing but a bunch of gluttons. The reason they're inducing us to do this, and the reason they're inducing us to be such gluttons and such assholes and, and such mindless uh, idiots that care about nothing but sexual gratification and consumption, the reason they're doing this is because they want to give their little communist garbage substance. They want to give their communist agenda substance. So that's why they're doing whatever it is that they can do to try to downgrade the mental capacity and the moral ethos of American society. And they're going to do that by suggesting these warped ideas and desensitizing your conscience. I mean, don't you understand that? Every time you watch a Hollywood movie, your conscience is being desensitized by these social engineering wizards. And don't let them do it. All right, don't let them do it, folks. All right, I mean, bottom line, I mean, it would be a great day to see, you know, all these little Hollywood assholes that were there, you know, with their uh, $5,000 suits and their, you know, $20,000 dresses at the Screen Actors Guild. I I would love to see these idiots in the unemployment line having to actually go out there in the private sector and not some... Uh, you know, good old boy liberal uh, circle or a good old boy liberal clique in Hollywood. I mean, let me tell you something. For you folks that want to see the disgust and filth in Hollywood, take a look at what Dave Chappelle said about Hollywood. Now, Dave Chappelle, this was a man who was on top of the world, all right? I mean, he, he had a show that everybody wanted to watch. That everybody had to see. I mean, this man was making $50 million. But he gave it all up. He gave it all up. He decided, I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, You know, he kind of went a little loco. And the reason is, is because he couldn't stand the type of filthy, disgusting garbage that was in Hollywood. He couldn't take it. He couldn't take the agenda that they were trying to force him. They were trying to force him to initiate. Go look it up for yourself. Dave Chappelle's a true patriot, man. I'm not joking. I mean, I know that there's a bunch of kids probably laughing, saying, oh, look at him, he's saying Dave Chappelle's a a patriot. You're damn right he's a patriot. You're damn right. Because let me tell you something. He gave up that $50 million out of principle. He's a family man. All right, he doesn't want his children being exposed to this garbage. He uprooted his family. He uprooted his family and moved out of the damn country. He moved out of the damn country, for heaven's sake, because he couldn't stand the liberal, the liberal and feminist Hollywood inducement of our society. And we can't let it happen. We can't let it happen. Do you understand? With the innovation of the Internet, we can create our own content. 
We can create our own movies. We can do it. That's what I'm doing with this radio program, folks. I guarantee you that you do not and never will not ever hear another true conservative radio show like this one right here. You're never going to listen to it. You're never going to find one. Because I'm creating this content, folks. You want to know why? Because this is the kind of content that I want to hear. All right? I listen to Beck. I listen to Savage. And what are they doing? They're trying to shove gold bars down my throat. They're trying to shove gold bars down my throat. They've got these gold companies propping them up with their hands up their shit funnels. I have no special interest, folks. Always remember that. I've been doing this for three years. Three years. And I have no special interest other than the fact that I believe in true conservatism and I believe in the Constitution. That's the only thing that motivates me. Don't you understand that? And I'm calling on all those that believe in the true conservative movement, on all those who believe in the true conservative commentary that I convey on this program. It's 2010. It's our time again. It's our time. So you need to do something about it. You need to go out there and organize. You need to go out there and organize. And then go out to the ballot box and show this liberal feminist government that we don't want this kumbaya communist socialist crap. We want capitalism. We want capitalism. We want free markets. We want opportunity. We want opportunity, not handouts. We don't want handouts. I and my children and my grandchildren don't want a handout. God damn it. I don't want to hand out. So go out there and organize, folks. Get a website. Get a blog. All right? Go out there and go door to door if necessary. Go out there and organize people in your local community and unelect all these power hungry autocrats. Unelect them all. Unelect them all. Because if you don't do anything, folks. If you just sit there and stay complacent and think that by sitting your fat jelly ass in the damn couch come election day and think that things are just going to work themselves out, it ain't going to work anything. It ain't going to work out nothing. Uh, So, folks, once again, please go out there and spread the word about the true conservative movement. Go out there and organize so we can unelect these power-hungry autocrats in Washington. And by God, folks, spread the word about the true conservative radio show. Tell everybody you know about it. And let me tell you something. I'm more motivated as ever to continue to do these broadcasts because of damn leftist Google and dumbass Sarah Palin joining Fox News as a damn legitimate commentator because of all this malarkey, because our country needs it. Our country needs realism. Our country needs to be slapped upside their stupid, dumbass, gluttonous, eating mouths and realize that this is real, that it is our time. It is our opportunity to implement our power as the people, as the people. All right? And we want opportunity, damn it. I don't want handouts. And nor do I want to take care of these ungrateful assholes, these so-called poor in America, these dirty dishrag whore uh, mothers, these single mothers out here that are shitting out eight kids from eight different fathers. All right, I don't want. To, I don't care about these people. All right, you know who I care about? I care about the working person. I care about the working man, the working woman. All right, I care about individuals who are making a contribution in this society, who are paying it forward, who are doing their jobs, who are paying their taxes, who are being law-abiding citizens. That's who I care about. Anyway, folks, uh, please spread the word about the True Conservative radio program. And, of course, follow me on Twitter. It's the best opportunity to figure out when I'm going to conduct these broadcasts. And, of course, the name to follow on Twitter is Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores, G-H-O-S-T, 
P-O-L-I-T-I-C-S. Ghost politics. All right, folks? And once again, folks, um, check out the blog, all right? Ghostpolitics.blogspot.com. And, of course, folks, the official website of the True Conservative Radio Program, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. All right, folks, I need your help. I want you to go out and email all these idiots. Email Beck. Email Savage. Email everybody you know. We need these individuals to hear this realism so we can smack them into reality. I will take anybody on the debating table and make them look lower than a leprechaun's nutsack. I will make anybody. I will take anybody on. But I need your help, so go tell them. Go tell them that you want to hear it, folks, because that's the only way that's going to get them out of their holes out there. Anyway, long live the true conservative movement and death the feminism. A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how. 